So Raghu, uh, one of the major concern of our present day diet pattern is the fat content in our food. How do we approach it? Like, if, uh, is there a category called bad fat and good fat and yeah. how do, and what's the intake? Yeah, intake, you know, uh, uh, the recommended uh, daily uh, intake uh, or the allowance is uh, something like 30 gram of visible fat. The visible fat is a fat that you add as a fat, you know, okay. extracted refined fat that you add. But there's always invisible fat mm -hmm. when you add, you know, uh, groundnut and all mm -hmm. these nuts and oil seeds. So they do deliver almost 20% to 50% uh, of fat. So that way you get fat. But as far as visible fat, mm. added fat is concerned, uh, fat as itself is about 30 gram. So uh, fat is very important, you know, though there is a lot of bad press about fat mm. and there's anti-fat kind of a uh, movement, you know. Mm. Everybody today talks about uh, fat-free diet, fat-free cooking. Right. You, have, you have vessels, cooking vessels and technology coming in that you can cook without fat. Right. You know, there are lots of books available, fat-free cooking. But I would say it is uh, sheer uh, stupidity and taking, uh, you know, a concept to a, uh, another extreme, uh, you know, level. level. Yeah. Because basically, you see, uh, including human brain, it's not that pro-fat is good, but uh, including the human brain. The human brain, they say, is a ball of butter stuck at the end of the stick. And you work, you work with, with the fat. And every cell has got a, a lipid layer. Uh, so you know, fat is very important uh, component and it delivers just it is a very energy dense nutrient because a gram of fat delivers something like nine calories mm. uh, uh, compared to four calories delivered by protein and, uh, and uh, carbohydrate. Fat is also important in, to deliver four uh, vitamins. Yeah, they are called fat soluble vitamins A, D and E, K. Hmm. Vitamin A, e, D, and E and K. So the four of those vitamins hmm. you can't deliver unless you have fat. They are fat soluble vitamins. Right. So if you don't take fat, you are deprived yourself. You deprive yourself of these uh, four vitamins. But uh, of course, there is uh, excess fat intake hmm. uh, in the form of hydrogenated fat, what we call as vanaspati, okay, and um, <clears throat> refined fat. And uh, see, you, you, if you eat potato chips. Uh, they're so crispy, uh, crunchy and all that, but they have 55% fat. Uh, the earlier you know when a product has fat, you would know. You can feel it, you can touch it, the greasy right, substance. Right. One would easily recognize, oh, I'm eating something very fatty. Hmm. But you eat a potato chips that's crunchy, you know, all that, you know, the sound that it makes. Uh, you don't feel that it has got almost 55% of fat, you, you wouldn't right, even realize. Right, absolutely. So that is, that, is a, that is a problem, how fat is being incorporated today for the mouthfeel and all that, uh, without being able to even recognize its presence. Hmm. Um, as far as fat science is concerned, it's called lipid science. Fat is, you know, anything that is solid at room temperature is called fat, anything that is liquid at room temperature, hmm. temperature is called uh, oil. So that's hmm. the difference between oil and fat. Basically, they're called lipids. The components of lipids, like the proteins are made up of amino acids, the fats are made up of fatty acids. Uh, fatty acids, okay? So there are saturated fatty acid, palmitic acid, oleic acid, linoleic acid, linolenic acid. You know, there's a number of fatty acids, ecosohexonic mm. acid, ecosopentonic acid. So like that, there are fatty acids. There are a large number of fatty acids. Mm. Depending on the length of the chain, depending on how they're connected with each other, the, there are chemical bonds called single bond, double, saturated bond, double bond and things like that. The way the bonds are positioned, mm. they are numbered, named and all that. Mm. Broadly speaking, the fatty acids of the fats are mm. called saturated fats, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. You would have seen in the fat PUFA, rich in PUFA and all that, right. polyunsaturated right. fatty acids. But of all these fatty acids, the current science, see again, we should be very careful when it comes to fat science. Hmm. There is no permanent science, uh, as it is always, uh, it, uh, that applies to all sciences. Like Karl Popper saying that you, a scientific truth is one which is falsifiable, you know, which is ready to be falsified. Hmm. So we talk about fatty acid, so these three. Current science says restrict energy from saturated fatty acid to less than 10%. 1% energy has to be derived from omega-3. 4% from omega-6 and the ratio between these three kinds of fatty acid I mentioned should be in the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1. That's a healthy fat. But very important thing today is the hydrogenated fat, what we call as vanaspati, 
We make large, almost four million tons of vanaspati, which goes into bakery, hmm. um, you know, sweets, Indian sweets. Uh, so vanaspati is a very important, along with maida, hmm. is an important ingredient in Indian sweets, hmm. bakery, pastries, and all that. Right. But we have a serious problem with this hydrogenated fat. What happened in the Indian context? If you speak, we have high trans fatty acid, which is being looked down upon across the world. Hmm. This trans fatty acid, when you know, when you subject the topical oils. To under the hydrogen gas in the presence of nickel, mm. they get converted. Today we have interestric, uh, you know, uh, interesterification. There's another process mm. of making the liquid fat into solid. Why do you have to liquid into solid? Because they have a long shelf life, and they are amenable for your usage. They are very user friendly. Me mechanistic character they have in the machine. They gel well, and you know it accommodates very well to any product, any shape, any size, and all that. So you have hydrogenated fats. Okay. But the problem with the process of hydrogenation is that you end up in the change in the chemical structure. That from the cis form it just just changed mm. to trans form. When the change, when the structure changes, its behavior changes, its health impact okay. changes. So you know, these are chemical molecules. So today we have realized, but for the past 50 years, from the days of Napoleon, you mm. know, we have been using this hydrogenation process. Mm. Basically, it was made for the military, because and they, we wanted a substitute for ghee, mm. and ghee was looked down. But and this came in like industrialized product with brand and all that. But today we have a serious problem with hydrogenated fat. Yeah. Trans fatty acid, it increases uh, 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 bad cholesterol and decreases the good cholesterol. So we have a serious issue. In abroad, in Europe and other countries, they have now restricted the trans fatty acid to less than 5%, 2% in the hydrogenated fat. India doesn't have a law as such uh, mm -hmm. till today. Mm -hmm. But we need to restrict the trans fatty acid. But generally speaking, the fatty acid science, as I said, is provisional, mm. and there was a too much of a bad press and bad sci you know, scientific report findings and all that, as far as saturated fats are concerned. But today there is a change of attitude. People are saying, uh, you know, the Time magazine, the renowned Time magazine says mm. in, the, in, the, in its cover story, eat butter and be healthy and kind of a thing. So yeah. things are changing. It's very provisional science that it keeps changing. Mm. So, but yes, we have, uh, I, you know, in India, we, uh, the average consumption is about 12 kg mm. of, of fat per annum. But uh, there are regions uh, and sections of the so society which consume over 120 kg. Fatified diet, very high fat consumption. That is leading to huge problems. We need about 30 gram of fat. We need total, in total, we need about 25 to 30 percent of energy to be derived from this fat. Mm. Then again, importance of these fatty acids, mm. uh, oil seeds which are rich in omega-3. Mm. We have uh, very beautiful oil seeds in this country. Mm. We have forgotten. For example, uh, they call it as, uh, you know, the subja seed or the basil seed, okay. which has got about 20 23% of omega-3. You put it in water, it becomes a gel, mm. a beautiful gel, and it's very mm. good for the health. And uh, of course, flaxseed is, everybody is, uh, mm. there's a new rage for flaxseed. Uh, fat, flaxseed is about 53% of omega-3, mm. like mm. the fish oil I mentioned. Mm. Uh, for vegetarians in particular, mm. that's a good, rich source of omega-3. Mm. Then there's mustard, you know, in our grandmother's seasoned sambar. That has 14% omega-3. So very good. Okay. People, when they, you know, when you buy omega-3 separately, that's about 10 lakh rupees per kilo. When you oh. season with mustard, uh, you get it free. I mean, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. And the greens, like the parsley, number of greens, they also mm. have good omega-3 fatty acids. Okay. And bajra is a good uh, cereal, you know, the pillar, mm -hmm. millet, which has about 23%, it's got about 5% fat, mm -hmm. part of which about 23% again mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, about 5% is again omega-3. Mm -hmm. So you have got rich source of omega-3. Today, th the whole story is, you know, the omega-3 is being sold as a heart healthy, mm -hmm. you know, oil and all that, separated, branded and all that. We don't really worry much about it because there are a number of food sources of omega-3. Mm. Their conversion from omega-3 to the higher fatty acid could be a little less, uh, depending on the ratio between 3 mm. and 6. Uh, but uh, you have enough natural sources for this. Uh, but uh, what is it essentially, omega-3 and 6 you mentioned? Yes, yes. Because a, a layman cannot understand what does it constitute yeah, in, exactly. in a See, sense. Basically, I mentioned that the fats, depending on the, the, the structure of the fatty acids, mm. they are classified. Okay. Saturated, uh, satur uh, when we say omega-3, the oil has got a, a chain of fatty acids. Mm. The double bond is sitting in the third position. One, two, three. Third position, there is a double bond. Mm. So that is why we call omega-3. Mm. But today, there's, this, is a, uh, the, this is a part of the nutrition conversation. That okay. omega-3, you know, is rich and is being sold as capsules and all that. So omega-3 is a fatty acid, mm. uh, dominantly uh, rich in uh, certain types of fish, sea fish. Okay. 
okay. and uh, it's there are oil seeds like the uh, basil seed, uh, garden cress. Hmm. Garden cress is another beautiful oil seed. Hmm. Uh, you know, even tribals today during the pregnancy and lactation they use garden cress. Hmm. So it's again very rich in omega three. And then you have the flax seed, and of course in South America today the chia seeds and the Western world the chia seed is considered as a superfood and all that. But we have an equivalent product in India mm -hmm. called basil mm -hmm. seed. Chia seed also is very rich in uh, omega three, and they also form they rich in soluble fiber and and uh, omega three. If you can afford to accommodate them in our daily diet, because we have right, forgotten. Right. Uh, you know, to whatever little one or two spoons of these oil seeds, uh, mm. they do uh, deliver good, uh, you know, health benefits. Uh, okay. Yeah. And also going back to your answer, previous yeah. answer, what is um, bad cholesterol and good cholesterol? You yeah, mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See, typically what has happened, see when there is a cardiovascular problem, when there mm. is a stroke or heart mm. attack, uh, and when you do a post-mortem, uh, the, the block, if you remove mm. and do a biopsy, mm. what you get there, the stub, the material that is blocking, mm. is uh, there you find cholesterol. Okay. But there are theories today, people are saying, because there is cholesterol in the blockage, does it mean that the cholesterol is the culprit? Or is it a, is it a person who accidentally is present at the, at the place of crime? Okay. Uh, uh, so is that the reason? Or is he the murderer? Is mm. he the culprit? Or he just happens to be there and you accuse him of being the murderer? So this theory is going on. So there's no last theory on these omega-3 and fatty acids. But I mean, the, sorry, the mm. fat, um, cholesterol, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. See that today we're talking about LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, VLDL cholesterol, and they say there's another type which is still more, uh, you know, low density mm. uh, lipoprotein. Mm. Uh, but uh, today we know that saturates uh, and uh, the trans fatty acid, which mm. I mentioned about mm. when you do hydrogenation, they increase the bad cholesterol. LDL is called bad cholesterol mm. in the current parlance, and HDL is called good cholesterol. Mm. The HDL, as HDL, HDL has to increase, LDL has to increase, uh, decrease. Mm. But there is no, yeah, the science is again, we have to be little careful, but though we, we talk about it, uh, we know that it is, uh, it is uh, to a large extent, it is proven that the cholesterol, bad cholesterol is present whenever there is a blockage. See, blockage happens like this, when there is some inflammation, uh, cholesterol gets in and mm -hmm. then the macrophage com comes in mm -hmm. uh, because it's a kind of a civil war, they say. That, you know, okay. there is a fight between them and then they get stuck and they don't come out and then there is a swelling, that there, there is a ulceration mm -hmm. and then there is calcium deposition on that. They say ulceration, cal calcification of the ulcerated cell, then there is a blockage. Mm -hmm. So that blockage, uh, so what leads to inflammation? why the cholesterol drip dip you know sinks into the tunic cell we don't know we don't know there's no proper you know the etiology the, the process of pathology if you see you don't you are not able to say pinpoint and say this is the reason that it happens we do not know hmm. but cholesterol gets deposited and if you have bad cholesterol there is a problem but of course the cholesterol reduction issue uh, uh, you know good dietary fiber reduces cholesterol okay so there are sunlight, for example, is a beautiful sunlight. Sunlight, what happens? It it just falls on the skin, and the cholesterol present on the skin gets converted to vitamin D, hmm. uh, cholecalciferol, and the calciferol is becomes calbindin for calcium absorption. So you see, you just expose yourself to uh, sunlight, then uh, you know you have uh, you you were, you were able to convert the cholesterol into vitamin D, to a, a so-called bad substance into right. a more useful biologically useful form. Okay. So, uh, th th this is the way natural mechanism of being able to convert uh, the, the cholesterol into, into useful form. Now, uh, there's this whole discourse on uh, value addition to your food, to the diet. And would you like to throw some light on how the food processing industry is uh, catering to that yeah, concept? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, uh, value addition, we typically talk India is a country where only about five to seven percent of food is value added, mm. whereas in the West it is hundred percent. You know, and mm. that's a kind of a story we call often hear. Uh, what is value addition? Uh, see, sometimes it is a misnomer. Mm. That is, you know, you removing nutrient can also be called as value addition, uh, okay. or simple dehulling. See, of course, you can't eat the uh, rice with husk. Mm. You need to remove the husk mm. and uh, eat the rice. Uh, that is fine, that is value addition. Uh, but if you remove the husk and remove the outer coating of the uh, rice, right. that the rice polish, 
and uh, make it pure white, then you, you have devitalized the uh, rice. Uh, so there the value addition uh, and uh, processing, uh, you know, uh, is in fact leading to uh, ill health and a whole lot of other issues. Mm. They typically say, uh, to mm. just to take a dig at, uh, you know, this value addition, mm. uh, you take rice to rice mill, mm. uh, remove the rice husk and rice polish. Uh, rice polish is very rich in nutrient. Mm. If you typically take a rice polish, mm. uh, earlier it used to only go for cattle and poultry. Uh, it has about 19% uh, of dietary fiber and about 15% protein and almost about 15% of good quality fat and all the B complex vitamins. Okay. It's a treasure of nutrition. Right. And where does it land up? In the poultry shed and the cattle farm. But now the value addition business has mm. uh, come in. Uh, rice polish goes to oil mill. Mm. You remove the oil and in the oil you remove the vitamin E and sell vitamin E to pharmaceutical companies. Okay. And person who eats the value-added white rice becomes uh, likely to become uh, diabetic and he gets a drug from the pharma same pharmaceutical company. Okay. You see, so, so this is to say that everybody makes business, right. uh, it's a value addition. Hmm. So, but there is a serious problem. Hmm. Uh, you are not supposed to uh, polish the rice, you are not supposed to devitalize, remove hmm. the nutrients, segregate hmm. them, separate them, sell hmm. them as separate nutrient uh, categories to pharmaceutical company mm. or as dietary fibers or as antioxidants or rhizonols and all that. Mm. So that kind of evaluation is detrimental to human health. But s minimal processing, mm. just do what is necessary to make it edible, remove the inedible part and rest, maintain as it is, cook it and eat it, you will have health. Mm. So that way there is, a, take for example oat. Okay. Oat, if you typically see original oat, it should have, it has 14% protein. But the rolled oats that we get here right. has only 8% protein. What happened to the rest of the protein? Okay. So the endosperm is removed. They say typically a disembodiment of mm. a grain, you know, mm. remove the head, tail and cut the limbs and then give you a starch. That's value addition. That should not be the value addition. Mm. I know the even in the in the in the oil um, mills and the oil you know extraction mills, they boil the oil at around 265 degree hmm. to boil off vitamin D. E. So this is a questionable process. You know, hmm. uh, can we uh, can we bring in technology which is which retains all the nutrients, hmm. minimal processing, nutrition retention, hmm. and that is value addition. Hmm. So uh, let's see if you eat fruit as it is. There is no value addition. Hmm. But if you convert, extract the fruit juice and add sugar to it and sell it as fruit juice, then there is a value addition. This is where I said uh, that is a kind of a misnomer. That's hmm. a kind of a, what you say, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't fit in hmm. to the word value addition. Hmm. So, but that is a good economic proposition that, you know, you, when you segregate and sell it, hmm. uh, the fruit fiber is a big business today hmm. uh, because constipation is a big problem and fiber business is a big problem. So what I would say is, how do, you, uh, where do you where sh take? For example, where should you get? How should you get your fiber, an right. unremoved fiber, right. embedded fiber, not extracted and removed fiber? Hmm. So from these angles, we need to question the way we are today processing food. I happen but, to. Um, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, 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 please. But uh, is um, as you mentioned that we we I, we hope that we get that kind of a technology which can retain all the nutrients, but is it? Um, is it the technology or it was a deliberate choice that the processing industry mm -hmm. is making? You are right. See, they, people, I, I happened to visit a rice mill in Tamil Nadu mm. and uh, there it's about 120 crore investment. Mm. And he told me, look, this machine processes uh, paddy and finally you get wise, white rice and if there is one brown rice, mm. the machine simply rejects it. Okay. So that is to say that uh, actually the, if there is brown rice, the, right. they should accept it. Right. So, so we have, see what happens, sometimes science and technology works like a slave hmm. to hmm. our uh, uh, perceptions, hmm. our prejudices, hmm. our preconceived notions. Right. Basically, I see they, they say that in India, there is this white supremacy hmm. and kind of a racism hmm. uh, in what we eat. Okay. Uh, we prefer white food, white rice to brown rice. Right. to red rice and black rice. 
So why we are, we, we, do, we are even people seek out white ragi, and mm. b but its very nature is different. Right. The very color uh, is a signifier mm. of uh, vital nutrients. Uh, but there is a uh, social prejudice mm. uh, in favor of white. Mm. Uh, so, but the technology also says, no, 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 we want what the market asks, what the market accepts. So the science become, becomes a, a stooge, a slave to our prejudices. Mm. So there, you know, to your question, we have a serious problem. So science should simply look at, does it deliver health? Mm. Am I not, I, I shouldn't devitalize what nature mm. has given. I mean, that's a way to, you know, I would say that, that the minimal processing and retention of nutrition is very important in value addition and processing. Okay. Yeah. Does a conscious consumer yeah. um, have has a choice in getting those things, uh, in getting the right food or the right, uh, like you mentioned, the rice, oil, uh, the flour, or whatever is being processed and refined? Does a conscious consumer has a choice to take get what he's looking for, he uh, or she's looking yeah, for? Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, today uh, you have uh, uh, we ha you have uh, you know. Uh, the market is littered with all bad products. You go to, you walk in, you, you aisles after aisle, you see the, the products, but uh, you see the sugar content, fat content, uh, you know, devitalized, mm. and being, products being sold separately as mm. uh, fibers, vitamins, and all that. Uh, right. But you don't see the wholesome grains. You don't see nature as it is right. uh, in the uh, market. Mm. You have to really seek out, you have to struggle hard to get the good product. Uh, uh, you, if you want to eat uh, uh, black rice, uh, I think you hardly get it in the Indian market today. Right. Uh, right. You see, we, when we talk about rice, mm. uh, the kind of diversity we had, we had about one lakh varieties of rice. That's what Dr. Richaria, mm. renowned geneticist, uh, uh, you know, who mapped the rice, uh, it's called Indian Vavilo, mm. you know, the man who mapped the gen genome, I mean, the mm. genetic diversity, mm. germplasm of the rice. But uh, uh, today, and he also said, if you have to eat all the varieties of rice, changing at every meal, you need to live for 500 years to taste all of them. That's the kind of diversity uh, that the rice provided. But today we don't have them. We right. don't have them. Like anything that you you want you want you want a good product. And the, see, if you want if you want let's say I want a ghee uh, from a, a desi cow. Hmm. I, I want to give from a particular breed of cattle, hmm. which is on the verge of uh, extinction, right. or on the uh, on the fringe of uh, mainstream. Hmm. You won't get it. See, there our standardization has got more to do with uh, uh, you know bulking them and you know putting a nutrition value to it, right. rather than species specific, region hmm. specific, locale specific, hmm. diversity specific. Mm. See, you can have, afford to have such kind of food. When you walk into a shoe shop today, you have shoes for walking, jogging, uh, tennis and hockey and cricket and everything. Mm. But why can't we have milk of, which is breed specific? Right. Somebody can say, I have a Tar Parker milk. I can mm. say uh, Amrit Mahal, uh, you know, cows. So you can, he can, you can talk about these varieties. Mm. Mm. So and that is a way the nutrition can be provided. People mm. can be choosy there. I would like to taste this product. I would like to taste the yak milk. I would like to taste the camel milk. I would like to take this variety of breeds mm. that exist in this country. So that is a real value addition mm. to give this existing varietal, uh, you know, mm. diversity that we have to give them as it is to people mm. and let them enjoy and uh, uh, tickle all their taste buds. Mm. We tend to follow some. Uh, most of us tend to follow some trends on food, like mm. healthy food. Um, how how far do you think that approach is right? In a sense, say what you talked um, said about oatmeal. Yes. This is something we probably most of us didn't know, Correct. like rice uh, or ha the choice of having rice or wheat. Uh, how far should uh, should we go uh, into following a particular trend? Yeah. Sometimes you know the, there's always like the, the like the fashion. You always have the season of the flavor. I right. mean, flavor of the season right, kind of right. thing. You know, this is the trend. Omega three is the trend for thirty years. Right. I know dietary fiber is a trend for twenty years. Hmm. This kind of thing. Oh, protein, calorie, micronutrients. Hmm. This is the age of micronutrient. So you have to look at it to hold some food, diversity of food. Hmm. That is why I said never go from uh, you know nutrition to food. Always from food to nutrition. Correct. See, you can't eat nutrients. Right. If you if you look out for calcium, you may have you you will end up eating mud. Mm. 
we need to eat uh, nutrition through food food that we are familiar food that is in line with our culture food that our grandmothers and mothers know how to cook mm. or you know anybody knows how to cook so it's a part of the food culture agriculture cooking culture and this is this is a socio cultural um, aspect involved embedded in the food system mm. you know you don't see caught that is why they some people say that we are today caught in nutritionism like all isms you know right. have their own That's negative a, yeah. uh, you know uh, thing so like this nutritionism you know mm. and also scientism nutritionism you know you look at uh, so there i see that um, rather than this uh, the, the flavor of the season mm. uh, look at the diversity look at the region look at the culture mm. and as long as it is in line with that uh, you're fine you don't mm. ask really these nutritional uh, mm. questions right. yeah.